Hey, good afternoon. Um, so the name of my company is Yin's Camp. I'm also a professor of computer engineering. If you wonder why Yin's Camp, Yin's is the Pittsburghese word for yuans, right? So, and obviously, if it's YouTube, why not Yin's Camp, right? And so that's really where we came up with the name. Um, to tell you a little bit about my history, um, nine years ago I came to Pittsburgh. Until then, never watched a football game in my life, <laughs> never watched a hockey game in my life. Fell hard for both games after I came here. Can't get me out of the house on weekends. I'm glued to the TV. And so it really turned me into a huge sports fan, which is really where we came up with a lot of our ideas. So we're a Pittsburgh-based startup focused on mobile technology. We actually developed something for the Pittsburgh Penguins for 40 games in their Stanley Cup winning season. And this was really inspired by being a sports fan. So I'll tell you a little bit about our background, and then we'll jump into e-democracy. Um, I've gone to many hockey games, and typically I get the nosebleed seats. I'm never going to get one of those luxury boxes. And as a fan in the nosebleed seat, I'm there because I want to be there with all these other fans. I probably get a better view at home, but the reason I'm there is to share it with 17,000 other people. And I started thinking when I went to these games, why can't I see the same thing that the guy in front next to the ice does? And suppose even if I did get to the front by some miracle, right? Even then, if some action breaks out on the other side of the ice, I'm still not going to be able to catch it. So what we had was the idea of live streaming of four to eight different camera angles. Follow the goalie, follow your favorite player, follow the net, follow the bench, all these things on your phone so you can catch any one of these angles on your phone during the game. Plus, you can do your own instant replays. And the idea of the own instant replays is, again, um, I get fairly annoyed when they show me an instant replay, which is exactly the opposite angle from the one that I wanted to see. So I thought fans should have that kind of control. So fans can cut their own instant replays from any one of eight different camera angles and see it in real time. And that's really what we built, and we did it for 40 games in the last season. Okay? So for, the, uh, for sports fans, it's unique live camera angles, automated instant replays, two seconds after a play has happened. They can do their own rewinds in real time on their phones. So think about doing TiVo on your phone, on your phone, right? So that's really what we let them do. We also do digital keepsakes, so something you can go back and brag to your friends about that you were at the game. <coughs> For teams, so why should teams care about this? It's an additional revenue generation opportunity because essentially they have fans in their seats and they can monetize dead game time. So whenever there's no action on the ice, it allows them to actually get eyeballs on something and monetize that game time, right? So now what does this have to do with e-democracy? So we started building these apps and we started building a whole bunch of mobile apps. And if you notice here, you're really trying to give control to the fan. You're saying, here's an event you're at, but the fan has control. The fan decides what they see, when they see, and how they see it. We give them that full control. And that's really what we're trying to bring to democracy as well. Uh, with that in mind, we're actually debuting um, iBerg, which is a new mobile application for the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, it's the first iPhone app for the city of Pittsburgh. It will be announced, I believe, in a press conference next week. So I'm It'll be the first other. mobile app ever for local government available on iTunes. So this Word on race against Boston, folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, it will allow Pittsburghers essentially to report complaints in real time, <laughs> potholes, graffiti, traffic. As you know, we don't have any of these, right? You've looked around. Um, and to have those complaints automatically geotagged so they don't need to put in which street address, anything else. They take a picture, they see a pothole, take a picture, it gets geotagged, submitted to the city, they get a trouble ticket number, and then they can follow up with the city. Point, shoot, go. Um, what about city officials? There's a benefit to them because they can now visualize this data on Google Maps and see where all the complaints were. They can see that, you know, a thousand people complained about this specific pothole, so maybe this is something they should look at first more than something else. Uh, they can aggregate common complaints of that nature. Um, manual data entry of information. Right now, if you look at a lot of 311 systems for cities, people call in. And when people call in and they're irate, you can't make any sense of the message that they just left. Right? Or people have to go back home after have, they've seen a pothole during the day, go back in, look at a form on the web, and type in the information. You know, it's a question of whether you were frustrated enough to remember to do that at the end of the day. Right? And so this allows people to complain on the go, uh, essentially. <laughs> so the current manual entry um, is a voicemail-based system, so we're going to replace that with just having people being able to report this on the go. And now, on the city side, they don't have to have the manual entry. All this information just goes into their system, no more typing in the stuff. Scheduling repairs and investigations more efficiently. So here's what it looks like, and this is what you'll be able to download from iTunes. So this is the interface, iBerg, and you can see our good old black and gold colors. 
right? So you take a picture. Here's a picture of a pothole. <coughs> It's a real pothole, people. Uh, um, and then you can type in a description of it, which says large pothole in the outbound right lane of Forbes near Northumberland. Whatever description you want. Um, you can add the description, which I just did. Um, you can go ahead and add information, which we can pull in automatically, like the name, your cell phone number, all those things we can pull in directly from your phone so you don't have to waste your time typing it. Or if you did want to type it, we can also cache it so the next time around it's always available for you. And there you go. All the geotagged information is automatically pulled up. It's a bit. That's it. So that's the thing that we're going to have in place. Now, on the city side, this is what the city gets. They get the Google Maps version where they can click on these incidents and out pops the real-time picture of it. If many people complain, they'll see a lot of those little thumbtacks there, and they'll know that this is a really hot, a big hot spot that they should go after. There's a pothole. There's tree falling down. Uh, there's graffiti. So you can see this is how the city views it on their side, which is also tremendously useful for them. Right? Again, this will debut next week. So what's next for us, having done this and having rolled this out into the city? Obviously, making sure that people use it, that's a big deal. But apart from that, to try and actually bring more of the democratic process to a citizen's fingertips, personalize it for every single resident. So for example, um, I may not care about everything that's going on in the city, as Brad pointed out. I may only care about things that affect my life, my district, my neighborhood, my street, my place of work. Sorry to be selfish, but that's how most of us work. We have a limited amount of time to engage in these things. So what if you could actually go out, take all that wealth of information, and take a personal's, person's preferences and actually filter it out based on what their interests are? They can watch government at work live, just like we did for the Pittsburgh Penguins. They could watch live streaming of council meetings. Maybe they have a few minutes on the bus while they're going, going into work, and they know a certain meeting is going on. They can catch a few seconds of it, post a Twitter question immediately into the council meeting, and have someone respond it live. And this is exactly what we do. And they can be notified of decisions or schedules or meetings that are of interest to them. They can just say, I live in this district, on this street. So anything that relates to those kinds of incidents or things that happen in their neighborhood and street, they would automatically have those populated on their calendar and they'd know to look it up. What else? Well, Pittsburgh is also rich in history, architecture, and sports, and these are all the things that I love about Pittsburgh. Obviously, we want two kinds of things, not just to have citizens more connected with their government, but also to allow other people, and even sometimes Pittsburghers themselves, who don't know everything about their city, to discover things about Pittsburgh. And, you know, for example, could you follow the Carnegie Trail, the Frick Trail, the Hornborstel Trail? Things like that. Could you plan your own trip around the city? Again, all from your cell phone and the ability to see on demand who's been at a certain site and integrate this with Facebook and other places. And the advantage of this is apart from just connecting people to their city government, which is what we already do, you also connect Pittsburghers to each other. And so the idea is Pittsburghers and visitors to Pittsburgh with each other. So the idea is this is a one-stop shop thing in your hand, connect you with city government, allow you to complain, which is something all of us love, and allow you to get information about where you live, the city you live, and what other people think about. And finally, contact information. You can reach me at freeideanscam.com. On Twitter, look for iBerg. We already have a Twitter feed, and um, it will go live officially once the app actually debuts next week. On Facebook, please feel free to become a fan of the page. And that's a live shot from the Stanley Cup. <laughs>